Hello and welcome to IABM TV. I'm Lorenzo Zanni, Head of Insight and Analysis uh, at IABM. Today we're going to have a look at trends in store, in the store part of the market, and we are joined by Brian Campanotti, CEO of CloudFirst.io, um, Jonathan Morgan, C CEO of Object Metrics, and Michelle Maddox, Marketing Director and Workflow Expert uh, of Imaging Products. So let me start from you, Michelle. Uh, I will start from a very general question, as usual. Uh, what do you see as the main drivers of change in, in store from, from your perspective? Uh, I think that technology is changing and people's needs are changing. Um, I think those are obviously always the biggest drivers. Um, we're seeing a lot of security questions, um, okay. capacity questions, things like that in our booth. So I think that that's where people are focusing right now on their storage needs and kind of starting from there and then maybe trying to figure out what their best uh, avenue is. Jonathan? Um, I think we're seeing the age of object storage really come in into fruition. Um, a few years ago, people were talking about LTO, perhaps yeah. as an archive platform, and now that's really moved on, that conversation, into a more fluid, hybrid workflow. Yeah. Brian? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. I think really what we're seeing is a transition where, you know, the past, well, I've been doing sort of archive software for, for two decades now, and it was always a case that, you know, tape would go away and disk, but it's been very strongly positioned tape just because of the TCOs. And just recently, I mean, almost in the last year or so now, uh, with uh, advancements in object storage, yeah. we're seeing the cost of, of, you know, per gigabyte per month kind of concepts coming down yeah. quite significantly. And we're also seeing the same thing on, on cloud as well. So yeah. now the economics are are getting very, very close to motivate customers to move away from tape, finally, after a couple of decades. Yeah, and what we, uh, that's what we're seeing as well. I mean, the, the store market remains quite turbulent, um, as you said, prices, uh, uh, but also a lot of competition. So how do you differentiate yourself in such a crowded marketplace? Yeah, it's, a, it's a very good uh, question. So uh, historically, I was uh, formerly the CTO of Front Porch Digital. Uh, we had the deep archive software platform, so very pervasive in the industry with a lot yeah. of large networks, broadcasters, uh, national archives. And all of those systems were traditionally with data tape. And now what we're seeing is clients that are looking for help, you know, because of turbulence in the industry, let's call it that, uh, looking for change, looking to embrace next generation platforms, next generation solutions. Uh, with the, you know, the cost modeling coming to make sense, it makes the conversation easier for us while we're helping the clients to plan and strategize around a 12 to 24 month migration yeah. away from a legacy archive system that we can now start embracing um, object uh, storage for yeah. on-premise, we can start embracing public cloud for you know the ecosystem benefits, and most of the client architectures that we're looking at now are, are hybrid. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan, do you want to add something on that? Uh, sure, I mean, we've really seen things change. Um, you know, 15 years ago, we were in the desert, not just in NAB in the desert, but as a storage company selling object storage, the question was, what is object storage? And now people actually understand the benefits of that, how that can fit into scalable architectures, how that can fit into hybrid workflows that go from on-prem into the cloud, back out of the cloud on-prem, backwards and forwards. So in terms of differentiation, there are some other players now in the object storage field, and that's good because now people understand what that's about. Um, we differentiate ourselves very much because we're really media focused. Yeah. We don't just sell a generic bit bucket that just stores data. We do store data, we store it safely, but we also add functionality, integrations, proven workflows in that media sector that the customers here, they really need that. Yeah, and what, uh, yeah, that's what broadcast media companies want, well, especially media services as well. Michelle? Yeah, I think that for us, it's really important to work with partners and things like that. Um, I think partnerships have become uh, more expected than they had maybe in the past. Uh, collaborations between different companies so that you can offer uh, your customers end-to-end -end solutions um, what, for whatever that means for them. Um, we still work a lot in the LTO world. Um, I have demoed our LTO products more today than I have probably in the last two years, which I thought was kind of interesting because we certainly thought it was, you know, everybody's moving to cloud. But I think, you know, having multiple solutions um, is important to, to, to be able to uh, address everyone's needs. Yeah, yeah. and of course, we're seeing also a growth of uh, 
OTT, VOD, mm -hmm. and uh, broadcast media companies going through a digital transformation, going direct to consumer, more content. How, how does that impact uh, store companies? Um, I, th I think where <coughs> you have cloud as a distribution platform, mm -hmm. then of course it makes sense to yeah. move data from the cloud to the, you know, the, in terms of the distribution. But it doesn't necessarily add up that that therefore means that's where you keep your archives, your media libraries, your nearline workflows. So yes, video on demand, yes, that content distribution piece, you know, it's natural that you take advantage of a, um, of a very flexible uh, yeah. delivery platform. But however, in terms of the storage, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a game changing, just yeah. single reason why you would do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think if you're looking at, you know, when, when we're working with our clients and they're looking at transitioning legacy archive, most of the clients that we're working yeah. with might have 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 petabytes of data within these infrastructures. If you're looking at just a lift and shift to the cloud or a lift and shift to object storage, the economics just don't work. You need to look at it at a broader concept. And one of the motivators for doing things where you're embracing the cloud and maybe even object storage is really around OTT, distribution, direct to consumer workflows. Yeah. Anybody that's building those on premise today are really you know, backwards thinking. Uh, most of the cloud, public cloud service providers offer you know, a full end-to-end -end stack, including CDN services right to the edge. Um, and I think the important thing is, is when you're doing that kind of processing in the cloud, it makes sense to have your content there. But as Jonathan mentioned, it might not necessarily make sense to keep your content there. So transactional workflows, and then bleeding back into perhaps an on-premise footprint of some sort, yeah. because I mean the truth of the matter is, is that the production is typically still on-premise anyways, yeah. right? Um, but again, back to this idea of hybrid, where we're working with a lot of clients that have you know big, large, deep archives that do want to embrace the cloud because of potentially OTT and other types of, of ecosystem workflows that they want to build out, is we're still seeing a, a big focus on hybrid, where we look at you know, maybe offsetting egress fees from the cloud by putting in a footprint of, you know, disk or tape on premise, interacting with 10% of their content on a regular basis, but 100% of their content maybe in a multi-cloud type deployment. And a word I heard a lot today as well um, as you, um, is AI and ML. Uh, how does that impact storage going forward? It's a, it's a very good uh, motivator, let's say, to leverage things like public cloud services. So. Um, at the show, we're talking about uh, a solution that we built with AWS called Media to Cloud, which effectively is a deployable template within AWS that automates effectively a legacy archive migration to the cloud, so removing the high resolution data. Uh, it automatically kicks off serverless functions to uh, generate by H.264 proxies, to do facial detection, scene detect, ob object detection, auto transcription. And then we're building uh, metadata lakes within uh, the cloud yeah. that now, by API connections, your on-premise NAM system, your workflow orchestration tools can all tie into that rich repository. Most of our clients today are experimenting. Nobody today that we're working with is, is looking across you know, a 20 petabyte archive and pulling yeah. the trigger and doing it for everything. But I think as we sort of tease in, the costs come down on the cloud services, they start to tie into more call it cognitive workflows where they're using metadata to yeah. enrich the capabilities that they have, uh, you know, I think we're going to see it much, much more prevalent in the coming years. Yeah. Jonathan, on AI? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, AI on the one hand is a great argument against storing your data on LTO. Yeah. Because if you want to analyze, <laughs> if you want to train a database, for instance, you, you don't really want to have to pull all of that data back from LTO in order to be able to look through that. And I think that as we look you know, three, four, five years down the line, and as people want to monetize that archive, they want to be able to reuse the media library and insert yeah. that into their other um, productions, etc. you really need to have access to that data. So it really affects the decisions you're making when you're, when you're deciding where to keep that data and which formats to keep that data. Um, that's not to say LTO doesn't have its place, of course it does, but when we're speaking about AI, do you really want to go there? The second thing I would say about AI um, and image recognition, obviously, it's a term AI. It's fairly broad and all-encompassing, and mm -hmm. it doesn't really mean the same thing to one person as another person. You know, what we're seeing, for instance, really being used today is speech-to-text. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not really AI. You know, maybe 
have some clever stuff about that speech to text which takes into context, but it's not really AI. So um, the ability to enable that type of workflow is what we need here and now today. Yeah. What we want to be able to do with AI, what we can imagine AI possibly achieving in the future, you need the concept of data gravity. You want to process that data where the data is. You don't really want to have the processing in one place and the data somewhere else. Yeah. So you need to kind of build that into your arch architecture um, today so that it's ready for the algorithms tomorrow as they come you know, more and more into fruition and more and more kind of realized in that way. Yeah, interesting the point you make about LTO and not leveraging yeah. all that data. Michelle? Yeah, I have to agree with that. I think that um, that's kind of where cloud shines over, L one of the ways that cloud shines over LTO is the AI integration. Um, that's almost always the second question we get. Do you do cloud? What do you do with it? What about AI? Because that is definitely where it's going. Uh, just the simplicity of it, or not the simplicity of it, but the, the helpfulness that it can bring um, to any job or um, project that you might be working on um, is really important, but I do agree that it doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next uh, few months, few years, you know, with how that becomes more of a standard or, or what that means to people and kind of narrow that focus a little bit. Interesting. Um, so a final question for all of you, uh, starting from you, Michelle. What's coming next in um, content storage technology and what's, what's your company planning for for the long term? Mm -hmm. So we're showing our cloud solution here. Um, it's going to be integrated into all of our products. Uh, we do not just storage <coughs> but offloading, transcoding. So it's kind of important for us to be able to allow our customers to use all of those tools in an organized fashion in a scalable and secure environment. I think that's really what people are uh, a lot of people are concerned about with the cloud is how secure is it going to be? What exactly does that mean? How fast can I get that down? So that's kind of where we're positioning ourselves and making sure that our customers feel very comfortable with what's coming and, and where their uh, assets are going to be and how we're going to treat them. Thanks for that. Jonathan? Yeah, sure. So uh, there's a horrible term called SPOG. SPOG, S-P-O-G, a single pane of glass. You know, can I manage my data? <coughs> from a single place. Yeah. You know, do I have to go here and here and here to really understand yeah. what's going on? So we're building up our tool set around our object storage for the hybrid workflow, for the on-prem workflow, <coughs> that you can manage everything from that one place. And the second half of that is data analytics around the uh, management of that data. So um, you know, the, the Nirvana, I mean, it used to be monitoring you know, back in the day. It used to be, is my cluster online? Um, am I about to run out of space? Now it's the nirvana of, can I know how much this production cost me to make? How much was my data on that platform? How much was it there? Who was using that um, uh, information and when? And can I analyze that and make a cost model that actually makes sense to my CFO yeah. from the data? So for us, we have um, obviously our object storage, but we are also building in this data management suites around that to enable better and um, more intelligent usage of that data. Thanks for that. Brian? Yeah, um, we're sort of <coughs> heading down a similar path, this idea of storage orchestration. So we're building a, a platform that we call the Software Defined Archive, which effectively is a deployable software distributed type environment that can run in the cloud, on-prem, hybrid, and effectively sit over any type and any amount of globally distributed uh, storage. There's a lot of companies that are moving down that path, but where we really start to differentiate is again about this idea of metadata and cognitive management. So rather than making decisions based on you know what type of data it is or how big it is or when it's last touched, we're making uh, decisions based on facial recognition data, costing information, uh, particularly aligning with customer SLA demands, yeah. how many replications, how valuable is this asset, uh, tuning things based on cost of storage, mm -hmm. replications, and things like that. So to us, it's really about it's about metadata and tying mm -hmm. metadata. And, and you know, historically, these storage abstraction or archive systems were you know very hard tied to the physical data. As Jonathan mentioned, it was about you know byte sizes and you know static rules about how many copies are being made. We see it as a much more dynamic future where you could be in a cloud, you could be still right maintaining an on-premise data tape robotic system. Perhaps you're, you have some um, object storage maybe you're multi-cloud, and as the vendor models change, you just kind of flick a switch and your data moves to the tier that makes the most sense. 
Yeah, in interesting about data. Uh, it's a common theme from our content chain partners all over the, the content chain. Data is becoming increasingly important, cloud is becoming increasingly important, and uh, store from what we are today is changing a lot. Thank you very much for this interesting discussion. Um, for more information, please visit the IABM uh, website. Thank you. Thank you.